Thomas Edison, Richard Branson, John F. Kennedy, Mozart, Michael Jordan, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of vocations. Why is it that we rarely hear that they have or had ADHD? And you know what we hear even less about? Serena Williams, Emma Watson, Mel Robbins, Whoopi Goldberg, Agatha Christie, Aaron Brockovich, Cher. Yeah, the successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, a lifelong student, now a coach. I'm also the creator of Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, a system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your strengths, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest gifts. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka, and I wanted to welcome you to episode 87 of ADHD for Smartass Women. I have an announcement. Thanks to you, my wonderful listeners. We are now the number one podcast for ADHD women. Beyond that, our little ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast is in the top 10 to 14% of all podcasts on any subject. Can you believe it? I kind of can't. But what I did was I hired an amazing podcast consultant, and she told me this. So I think she knows what she's talking about. And I can highly recommend her. So if you're looking for someone, her name is Elsie Escobar, and I'm going to post her information in the show notes. Anyway, thank you so much for all of your support. You know, it definitely wouldn't have happened without you, but I guess you know that, right? And since we're the number one podcast for ADHD women, I thought we should probably sound like it. So I had my little audio engineer, my son purchase and set everything up for me. And doesn't it sound so much better? I now have the standard, well, I guess they call it the podcast standard. It's a sure mic. And these other two little boxes, some cloud thing to, I think it boosts sound. Without my son, Marcus, though, I'd still be on my old trusty mic. And I'm a little panicked because he's heading off to start his freshman year at NYU across the country, clear across the country. He's going next week. His gift, his strengths, it's all around music and audio. And because we're coming from a COVID red state, I'm in California. He's going to have to be quarantined for two weeks in the dorms. And why you, they don't allow their students to leave the building when they're quarantined. And that sounded a bit scary to me from a mental health perspective. So my daughter and I are going to fly out with him and we're all going to quarantine in the same apartment. Now, New York City, they have less strict rules, so at least my son will be able to go for walks and get out in nature. And so I'm going to be in New York City for about a month, so if I don't batch record in advance, you're probably going to hear a podcast or two on my old crappy mic. So I apologize in advance. Let's talk about the podcast. Okay, so we are in the last week of my six-week patented Your ADHD Brain is A-OK program, and the women have been so amazing, and they're so excited about what they're discovering about themselves, what's truly important to them, what their strengths are, their passions, their purpose, but then they drop into fear, and one of the sentiments that I kept hearing was, I'm too old, it's too late. And I have to tell you, I heard it from 50-year-olds, but I also heard it from 30-year-olds. And I totally got where they're coming from. You know, I've kind of been like this my entire life, right? I celebrated my 18th birthday, and I was so upset. All my friends were so excited, and, you know, we're planning these big parties, and I just had the sense that 
life is passing me by. I'm getting too old. I haven't done enough with my life. And honestly, I just wanted to be alone. I ended up going out with some friends, but I got a lot of grief about the fact that I just wasn't excited about it. Now, let me tell you that every single one of our 105 women in AOK, they all share this one thing in common. They have this strong need to make a difference in the world and live to their full potential. They fear that they won't be able to do it. And then age gets in the way as well, right? Is it too late? Maybe you can relate. So what I did for them was I shared my own story as an example that, no, it's never too late. And so I thought I would share it with my podcast listeners as well. Now, you all probably know at this point that I was diagnosed with ADHD five years ago. And at the time, I had two teenagers. They're now 21 years old and 18 years old. And mind you, I did not have my kids early in life at all. So you can do the math. My son was diagnosed eight months before I was. And so the first two years after his diagnoses, I was focused on figuring out what this meant for my son. During this process, I built cartography as a way to figure myself out. Cartography is my patented what do I do with my life program that is all about values and purpose. And it is what I built AOK off of. Now, learning my number one value which is to challenge the status quo, that is what made me realize that my son got his ADHD from me. Not even two years ago, after developing the cartography system, I decided that I wanted to be around a community of women that were like me. So I started the Facebook group, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, right? You know that spiel. (laughs) So I had no medical training. I had no real knowledge on ADHD. All I had was an interest in knowing more. I wanted to learn. And I was willing to do that learning in public because I knew that other ADHD women needed this information just like I did. And if I was open about it, then they could find me and know that I was their people. Still, it was not a comfortable feeling putting myself out there like this. But what I knew was that my purpose was to show people who they are and inspire them to be it. And I had a big, huge why. My why was to make my kids proud, which also involved making myself proud. You know, there's a great Gloria Steinem quote that goes something like this, that the best way for us to cultivate fearlessness in our daughters and other young women is by example. I wanted to be that example for my kids, my daughter, and my son, so they too would take a page from my playbook and live life fearlessly. I want them to do work that is personally meaningful to them and allows them to live to their potential. And just like the women in our AOK group, I didn't want to just ride off into the sunset like a lot of my friends, I'm sure, will do. And good for them, that's just not me. I was going to fight to finally make the real difference that I'd always dreamed of. And like many of you, I was running out of time. But you know, it was that perceived lack of time that became a major driver for me. The more I acted, the more it took away my fear. The more I saw that I could control my own fear, the more motivated I became. And so that's what drove me to six months later, start this podcast. Remember, no medical training. No real world experience other than my own and my son's. All I had was an incredible desire to learn with other women. And that was a little over 18 months ago. We're talking about a year and a half of time. We are now closing in on 270,000 downloads. All of this happened in under two years. And I'm not telling you this to brag Okay, maybe a little bit. I am proud of what I've accomplished here, and I'm proud of the community that we built. But I'm really telling you this because what this entire experience has taught me is that if I can do it, anyone can. The women in my AOK program, they've also convinced me that I'm no different than they are. And so I know that you're no different than we are. And lo and behold, just by showing up every day, I learned so much, and I ended up wanting to learn more. I learned from experts. I learned from you. I decided I wanted more knowledge around workarounds, so I decided to train as an ADHD coach. I hadn't planned any of this when I started out, but guess what? All this learning, and I became an expert in ADHD. 
I didn't mean to do it. It just happened. Get out of your head. Stop planning and do. You have no idea where you're going to end up until you do it. If I can do it, I know that you can do it. I honestly have never met a group of women that are so passionate, so committed, so kind, so funny, so smart. No, you know, they're more than smart. They're creative and brilliant. And now they're strength focused. They love their ADHD brains. And I know that whatever their thing is, and we're all so different, right? So our things are all going to be different. They are going to set the world on fire. They now know exactly what it is that they need to do. But as I told them, and I'll tell you, it's not all hearts and roses. You know, sometimes it can really suck. Next week, I'm going to share my Reddit story with you. You just need to know that that's par for anything that's meaningful to you, right? If it was easy, everyone would do it. But if you keep your head down and do one little piece every day, you can get there. I promise, you know, one of the idiosyncrasies of our brain is we tend to look out into the horizon at the big thing and we see that it's all done, right? And it's so terrifying. Like, how are we ever going to get there? Well, you're going to get there by not looking out at the big horizon, at the big finished thing. That is not going to motivate you to keep going at all. It's just going to scare the crap out of you. And you're going to say, I can't do it. No, for us, what we need to do, it's head down and it's what is that one little piece that I can do today to move forward towards my goal? You know, I actually have three little pieces on my to-do list every day and I mean little. I mean, sometimes the only three things I'll have on my to-do list are things like, okay, editing one 700 word article. And I'm talking about editing, not outlining, not writing. It's all written. It's all pretty good. All I'm going to do is edit it. I'm going to finish it. That last 5%, right? And then I may have on my list one meeting. And then the third thing may be to check out one new app. That's it. They are small things. But you know what? Five days of those three little things, I'm telling you, they sure add up. Okay, so I'm saying I have three things. So I have three medium things on my list, but then I have three little tiny itty bitty things. And that is what I start off every day with to kind of ramp up the dopamine and get me going so that I'll tackle those three little medium things. But that's it. True to form though, I digressed. I'm sorry. So let's go back to this feeling, the sense that you and a lot of us have that we are too old. And as I mentioned, there are women in their 30s and even their 20s who feel this way. You are not too old. You are not too old at any age. We are living in an unprecedented time, a time where there are 75-year-old models that have more social cred than the 23-year-old ones. Have you heard of Train With Joan? Go follow her. I think her Instagram handle is at Train With Joan. She's on Instagram. She's in her mid-70s. Three years ago, she was on medication for high blood pressure and acid reflux. She had arthritis and terrible edema in her ankles. She struggled to even walk down the stairs. She was tired. She was emotional. Her daughter is a professional bodybuilder. I think she's a professional bodybuilder. And she came to her and she said, look, mom, you need to train with me because I am so worried that you are going to kill yourself. And Joan wasn't sure she was going to do it. And she wasn't sure that she could do it. But for whatever reason, she agreed. I want you to go look at Joan's before and after pics. You can either look at her on Instagram. I think they're on Instagram. I know they're definitely on her website, which is trainwithjoanofficial.com. I'll make sure that those links are correct and I'll post them in the show notes. You are not going to believe this. She, Joan, now trains other people. In three years, she literally did a complete 180 at 70 years old. And as Joan says, if I can do it, so can you. Now, if you were a neurotypical person at 70, I'd be kind of like, good luck. I wish you well if you wanted to do what Joan did, right? Or if you want to do anything new, frankly. But if you have ADHD at 70, I'm like, she's committed. She's going to do it. This is exactly the kind of crazy stuff that we do, right? One day we just take the bull by the horns and we take him down. We don't give up. We have fire and brimstone and tenacity. All we need is interest and a challenge. 
And since there's a 60% chance that if you have ADHD, you're also an entrepreneur, let's talk about age and starting a business now, okay? So let me give you some statistics. 60% of people who start businesses are between the ages of 40 and 60. The average startup founder is 45 years old. A 50-year-old entrepreneur is 2.8 times more likely to found a successful company than a 25-year-old. And that's true for successful side hustles as well, by the way. A 60-year-old startup founder is three times as likely to found a successful startup as a 30-year-old startup founder and is 1.7 times as likely to found a startup that winds up in the top 0.1% of all companies. More often than not, I'll see someone asking to be admitted into our Facebook group, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, which by the way, Facebook just changed. So if you're going to look for us, it's now called Your ADHD Brain is AO. And we are stuck with that for the next couple of weeks. So if you join and you see something weird, blame Facebook. But you can search ADHD for Smart Ass Women. You'll find Your ADHD Brain is AO. Sign up there and we'll change it back just as soon as we can, just as soon as Facebook lets us. So let me start again. More often than not, I'll see someone asked to be admitted into our group and they're like 22 years old and they state that they had a later in life diagnosis. And it just kind of makes me laugh, but laughing, of course, in a kind way. To me, a late in life diagnosis is 45 years old or older. And maybe I should even extend that to 55 and older. If anything, you're too young, right? When you're in your 20s and 30s, you're not too old. If you're in your 20s or 30s, what you're doing is basically blaming your ADHD for what you have going on when in fact, it's not your ADHD. It's just your age. Everybody is in the same position. You just need more time to learn, to grow and to work. And that entails acting, doing, moving what you love forward. It doesn't matter if you haven't figured it out in your 20s or 30s. Just do more. And the more you do, the more you're going to figure it out. Yeah, you know, we're ADHD. This means that we have the ideas. So now go get the experience in all facets of life. Learn the strategy, discover how to implement, learn how to work with people. The real key here is to find something in your zone of interest and be around people who respect and appreciate you exactly the way you are. Now, You may not want to start a business. That may have nothing to do with your purpose. That may hold no meaning at all for you. Good for you. But what is it that you want to do? And what needs to happen for you to go out and do it? And if you're 45 plus, science proves that your experience, your skills, your connections, your expertise, and yes, your age are on your side. Ariana Huffington was 55 when she founded the Huffington Post. Julia Child was 51 when she started her first cooking show. Martha Stewart signed her deal with Martha Stewart Living Magazine when she was almost 50. And although Martha has never come out and said she has ADHD, her daughter Alexa sure has. And we know how hereditary ADHD is. Like I have always suspected that Martha Stewart has ADHD. And in part because I just have this enormous kinship to her. I feel like I work exactly the way she does. And when I used to read these stories and I'd hear from people who worked for her, oh, she's so difficult. She's so hard to work with. I would think, oh my God, that is totally me because I get snippy too when I'm trying to create and others don't take it as seriously as I do, especially when I'm under pressure. So I expect people to be able to read my mind, right? I know I am not an easy boss, but I'm fair and I am kind. I just may not be easy. Okay, who else? Benjamin Franklin invented bifocals at the age of 76. So how about some women that you haven't heard of that are not household names? And I guess Ben Franklin was not a woman, but I just threw him in because bifocals at age 76. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Mary Tennyson. She had a 92 year old mother who fell and broke her hip. Her mother had to use a walker, but she had trouble using her walker and also carrying a handbag. So Mary came up with an idea of a pocketbook that attaches to a walker. So at the age of 63, Mary started the very successful company called Stash Hall. 
Lisa Grable, at age 70, invented a new kind of bra strap. It's called the Stratmate, and you can find it everywhere today. She is still running that company at the age of 85. Jean Dowell spent over 40 years teaching yoga. At 80, she founded the Green Buddha Clothing Company with her daughter with the goal of inspiring gratitude. So there is one more thing that I want to say on age before I go. You know, we want to know how old people are because age functions as a way to think about and compartmentalize accomplishments. We use it to measure expectations, but you know what? It's not relevant. There are people who accomplish a hell of a lot at a very young age. And then there are people like us who tend to bloom a bit later. Personally, I reject the false meaning that people assign to age. My goal is to break assumptions about what women are capable of at any given stage in life, right? It's just one more way to label and divide us. And I think it's ageist, especially for women. If the child rearing falls primarily on us, it makes sense that accomplishments related to us personally and not just our family may happen much later in life. We finally have time to really focus on what we want to focus on. We've had time to discover what's important to us. And I refuse to ride into the sunset of retirement like I'm supposed to. I am planning to fight like hell to make a difference and live to my potential with this one life that I have. I want to be an inspiration to my kids so that when they're older, they don't give a second thought to living to their full potential in that second half of life either. To me, this feels like a feminist, if not a political act. And doesn't that sound like something an ADHD brain would completely embrace? Everyone else, they're starting to talk about retirement boring. I want to talk about what's possible. We have energy. We have time. We have ideas. We have interests. Why the hell not? Why not you? And that is what I have for you for today. As always, you're listening to ADHD for Smart Ass Women. If you like this podcast, please let us know by leaving a review. Our goal is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they too can discover their amazing strengths. And your reviews, they really help in that regard. One more thing, if you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview, or a topic idea for this podcast, you can go to my website at tracyoutsuka.com and leave me an audio message or reach out to me at tracy at tracyoutsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Outsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, it's also the name of our free Facebook group. We're a totally smart ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. Join us at tracyoutsuka.com where you can also find more information on our Your ADHD Brain is A-OK system. I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.